Good evening, everyone. My name is May Adralis, and I'm honored to be here, albeit virtually with you tonight. It feels fitting to accept this award, honoring women directors on the virtual stage of ARENA, founded by a visionary woman and led presently by an equally dynamic powerhouse on the eve of the opening of Lydia Diamond's Tony Stone, about the first boundary-breaking woman to play professional baseball. I want to thank Arena Stage, Molly Smith, and my dear friends and talented colleagues, Maria Goyanis and Timothy Douglas. And thank you, Andrew Ammerman, for this meaningful and transformative award. I wish more than anything I could be with you in person at the theater. Arena Stage was where I saw my first professional Lort Theater production in my life. Pearl Kleeg's Blues for an Alabama Sky, starring Felicia Rashad. I grew up three hours south of DC in rural Southwest Virginia and remember the long car ride as a teenager without much knowledge or care of what to expect. What a discovery then to experience the poetry and music of 1930s Harlem while also sparking a healthy bit of rage at the systemic inequities and oppression with which the play wrestled. Perhaps it is this powerful awakening and the influence of my socially minded, community centered immigrant family that began to frame my body of work, which varies widely in content, style, and form. But always at its center is a mischievous desire to make good trouble and fight for equity and justice. I direct and advocate for stories and playwrights who have been in our theatrical canon historically underrepresented so that they may be historically represented. When the pandemic hit and theaters turned out their lights, I had multiple productions that were shut down, canceled, or postponed. One of these productions was Kui Gwen's new play, Poor Yellow Rednecks, which tells the story of his parents, Viet refugees, and their struggle to survive as, well, poor yellow rednecks in El Dorado, Arkansas. At a time when the word immigrant is synonymous with humiliating and violent epithets, this humanizing story about the refugee experience couldn't be more urgent. But when would it be heard? Like a book put on a shelf, it would have to wait until 2023 to weave another perspective into the fabric of American culture and history. But I didn't want to wait to change the social and cultural landscape. 2020 became the year of creative growth. Untethered to conventional means of making theater, I found ways to express myself through other mediums, music videos across five time zones, a walking audio tour play, and producing and directing 23 world premieres on Zoom, iPhones, you name it. The mention of the year 2020 elicits much emotion, pain, grief, unrest, loneliness, and I think it is all of those things but I also think of the year 2020 as the year of 2020 vision, seeing clearly and wisely paving a way for the future. The pandemic and its subsequent Zoom office culture exposed all the messiness of my daily life, from the struggles with a lovable but food-throwing toddler to the dirty laundry tossed narrowly out of view. But more importantly, the pandemic exposed societal, political, and organizational ills it shone a glaring, unforgiving light upon the inequities embedded in our society, the paltriness of our social safety net, and the enormous deficiencies in healthcare, education, and caregiving. The naked view of these ills, however, urged the passing of a stimulus bill with its expansion of healthcare coverage and increased education funding. And led by theater artists, the theater examined and shifted its workplace norms to build a more inclusive, accessible theater. These political actions are the direct result of individual activists who found strength in a unified collective and found a way to voice and push for change. This seismic revolution is what happens when you empower an individual voice and an individual artist. And that is what this award means and why it is so transformative for me. It means empowering, believing in the power of an individual voice the individual artist, and I am deeply humbled and honored to accept. I am standing by the set of one of those once thought to be canceled plays, Rajiv Joseph's Letters of Suresh, premiering at Second Stage Theater in New York on September 14th, which is why I cannot be with you tonight. 
Soon, I hope this play invites a wider audience to wrestle with the intricacies and complexities of an imagined theatrical world while breathing in the same air, albeit through a mask, with others. In a time in which human contact is made frightening, to share the most intimate part of oneself while in communion with others is the incredible gift of the theater. You are all gathered tonight to experience that very gift. So congratulations on your opening. And thank you again to Molly Smith, Andrew Ammerman, and all those who have contributed to this moment. Thank you.